So the biggest misconception in the tech space that I see is that people think when you have more RAM, you have more speed. When you have double the RAM, you have double the speed. And this is so incorrect that it almost triggers me so much that and in fact, it triggered me enough that I decided to make this video for you guys. So let's talk about what RAM truly is. How much RAM do you really need? And let's break off this misconception once and for all. The best example that I can give you right now is a phone buff speed test. So RAM is found on pretty much every tech device you find. Even your calculators have a RAM. A RAM is a random access memory, meaning it's just short term memory that the computer or the CPU can access as it pleases. The most common devices that I can name out right now include your laptops, your phones, your game consoles. There you go. They all have RAM. All right, so quick self promotion break. I just created an Instagram account for Tech Alpha. So go search up I am Tech Alpha on Instagram or click the link in the description to follow me. You guys definitely have to follow me because the content there is just exclusive and awesome. So yeah, back to the video. Now the phone is the most easiest example for me to explain. And that is with the help of this video from phone buff. So there's a phone buff speed test, which is the iPhone XS Max versus the Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. And these are fairly equally priced devices that are, you know, very comparable, right? The thing is the iPhone XS Max has only four gigs of RAM, while the S10 Plus is paired with eight gigs of RAM. So that's double the RAM. So according to most people, that would mean double the speed, right? Double the RAM, double the speed. No, that that is far from the truth. So if you actually watch the speed test, you can see that the iPhone XS Max is only 12 seconds behind the Galaxy S10 Plus, which has how much double or four gigs more than the XS Max. So really, this is what happened. First of all, this speed test is not truly fair because we are running the iOS 13 beta. So RAM management has not been optimized yet. So we're running on pretty much raw management and that that's not that's not fair. So let's talk about RAM management. So RAM management is how well your device can use the given amount of RAM capacity. Now I have a Google Pixel 2 XL which has four gigs of RAM, but this was a 2017 device. So four gigs was pretty good at that time. But even to this date in 2019, it still performs awesome and it flies pretty much off the roof. And that's because it has good RAM management. So what is RAM management? I keep saying RAM management. Well, RAM management is how efficiently the device can take advantage of the capacity. I think I already said this, but the efficiency is the most important keyword here. A lot of these devices, including unfortunately Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus, are not very efficient, which is why they rely on much more higher capacity of RAM to actually perform. Another example that I can give you or another analogy that I can give you in terms of cars is one of these cars is in a hybrid. So a hybrid is able to use gas more efficiently and have a higher mile per gallon rate versus something like a sports car, which is not that efficient with fuel consumption leaving with a lower mile per gallon rate. So same way here, some of these phones can actually perform better with less RAM, while some of these phones can actually perform less with more RAM. That that makes sense, right? Yeah. So obviously the ideal situation here is for a company to have well-managed RAM as well as a ton of it. So imagine having the Google Pixel or the iPhone's RAM management with Samsung's RAM capacity. That would be a killer phone. But the thing is, these companies have to make a decision. Do they want to spend hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars for the research and development of RAM management and efficiency, or should they rather save their research money and instead throw in more money for the actual product so they can throw in more RAM? And at this point, I've seen a lot of Chinese companies, especially getting into this pissing competition where they see who can throw in more amount of RAM, who can throw in more amount of storage. You know what? Storage is fine. Keep storage out of the way. But we are in a pissing competition to see who can throw in more RAM. And that is that is just false because you go to a store and the average consumer sees two devices and would normally just think the one with the higher RAM is better. But unfortunately, the truth is far from this because sometimes you will see that lower RAM is better. And yeah, now we know what RAM is and we now know that more RAM doesn't always mean the better. So how much RAM do you really need if you're buying a laptop or a phone? 
Well, RAM is dependent on the amount of work that you do with it. So if you are a gamer or if you love to edit videos like me, then you would probably need a little bit of more RAM than someone who doesn't do those things. The thing is, when you are playing a game, the game loads on different textures or data that it needs for the next part of the game so that it can easily access it whenever it needs to without having a lag or a delay. So because of this, I would recommend if you want to play games or do video editing, go for a minimum of 16 gigs of RAM. A little bit more than this is kind of overkill and then you're kind of not taking full advantage of the RAM capacity, so I think 16 gigs is a sweet spot. Now if you, all you want to do on your laptop is stream media and then just do a little bit of browsing, 4 gigs should be more than enough. I think the Surface Pro has a 4 gig option and that is awesome because my sister has it and browsing is just flawless on it. So it really just depends on the user and what you want to do with your laptop. Now mobile phones and smartphones are a completely different ball game because the thing is, with computers like laptops and all that stuff, there's a huge difference or a marginal difference with a power user and then the basic user. So a power user can have like 5 operating systems and could play video games that are like heavily demanding and could do all sorts of things while the most basic computer user could pretty much only stream Netflix from their laptop. So there's a huge gap, right? But with smartphones, the gap is barely there. So for example, a power user could have Facebook and could use Firefox and have 50 different apps, but a basic user could also have Facebook and Firefox and have 50 different apps. There, there really isn't different. Like anyone can go to the Play Store and simply download an application. So the only limit you have is your storage. So because of this limited app selection and because of this gated operating system, Smartphone users aren't far apart from each other, so I could be a power user or consider myself as one, but the next person who is a basic user could pretty much have almost an identical selection of apps that I do. So if we all have pretty much the same needs and wants when it comes to smartphones, how do we choose what RAM you want? Well, I think with smartphones you don't have enough customizability to actually look at RAM when you're buying a phone. Like if I'm building a PC, I could actually think about how much RAM do I want. If I'm buying a laptop, I can customize and choose how much RAM I want, right? But with phones, you don't really have that option. If you like a phone, you can buy it and you will get whatever RAM the company decided to put into it. If you like the S10 Plus, you'll get eight gigs of RAM. If you like the XS Max, you'll get four gigs of RAM. So. You know, there's not much of decision making here for the user, but what the user can know just for their own purpose is that three gigs is more than enough to get away with it. I mean, like these phone buff style speed tests, they do like 20 different applications all within like two minutes. When was the last time you opened 20 applications in two minutes? And if you really want to take advantage of 8 gigs of RAM on the S10 Plus, you would have to open up YouTube on the side, your Gmail on the side, Chrome on top of that, and then Calculator on top of that, and then you would have Netflix on top of that, and all sorts of different applications. And I can guarantee you, no one ever does that. So, my conclusion here is, with smartphones, you just have to go with whatever phone you like. I mean, if you like the camera of the phone, just get it. Who cares how much RAM it has? That's not your concern. But if you are getting a laptop or a computer, don't overkill your system, just get 16 gigs of RAM if you want to save money and do still heavy editing and heavy gaming and just get 4 to 8 gigs of RAM if you just want to do casual browsing and stuff like that. So don't overthink it but definitely don't overestimate RAM, like double the RAM is not double the speed. Anyways with that being said this is Tech Alpha signing out, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, if you guys did be sure to drop a like, comment something down below and also make sure you subscribe and turn on the post notifications. So with that being said, I'm signing out. I will see you guys tomorrow. Peace out.